Uh, I got, got to give a lot of credit to Fordham. They, uh, they've gotten better and better uh, over the course of the year. <coughs> and uh, those young guys are really making strides. We, <laughs> we talked about as a team uh, that Severe was going to be able to do a whole lot more than he did yesterday. I think he only played four minutes and took one shot yesterday, and he certainly was aggressive today. But um, our guys made, uh, got some good defensive stops in, in the latter part of the game, last six minutes, and I think that was a difference. All right, questions for the players. Paul. Melvin, you looked very comfortable out there. Certainly your percentage, five, eight, four, seven on threes. Did you, do you feel like you're in a groove here? Or do you like playing in New York City? Uh, I don't think it's the arena. I mean, we just, just focus, clear head. Uh, I was just ready to play. Um, we had the game plan. We knew how dangerous they were offensively. And I think me just, you know, locking them on the defensive end, you know, the science of the game, you know, let the ball actually go. Other questions? Melvin, mm -hmm. what's going through your mind when Severe hits that, that long three after several closeouts by the defense on that play? Uh, I looked immediately at Coach, and he just put his hand up. I mean, that was a deep, deep shot. But then again, you got to remember the kind of player he is. You know, he's, he's, a, tough, he's a tough guard, and, you know, he, he can really score the ball. He doesn't really care what he is. So that was definitely my bad. And, you know, when you guard and play like that, you definitely got to know no personnel. Paul. Trevion, here I am over here. How you doing? Um, pretty complete game, 9 out of 20, 9 rebounds, but 8 offensive. Uh, two assists, one a no-look pass, I think, to um, uh, Jonathan. Could you talk about how complete your game was and what you guys were doing <coughs> on the offensive boards? And, you, and mention Mo, if you don't mind, because he also had five offensive rebounds. Oh, we just wanted to um, type the guys. We was going to take shots. We was going to miss some, make some, but we wanted to really get on the boards. And me and Mo were, were all over the boards. And as for everything else, I just wanted to be aggressive, um, came out aggressive. Um, and it was a latter part of the game where I wasn't as aggressive and Melvin and Doug and everybody on the team just told me to stay aggressive. So I, towards the end of the game, I just kept trying to attack the glass and do what I needed to do for the team. For, for both guys, Melvin, start with you. Um, for those of us up here who don't get to see VCU, Richmond, that rivalry, give us a sense. What's that like? Uh, it's, you know, it's like the city campus versus the private campus. You know, we're about nine miles apart. You know, it's you don't even – it's like a different world when you cross that side of town. I never see their fans. They never see our fans. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's – you know, our fans genuinely dislike them. Their fans genuinely dislike us. But, I mean, it's just a game to us. You know, it's another opponent. We just got to lock in, and we don't overthink it. We don't try to put too much emphasis on a rivalry, et cetera. Ralph. Yeah, basically the same thing Mel said. I mean, no matter what year it is, it's going to be a good game when we step on the floor because we're competitors. Both first man and us are competitive, and we go on the floor, we want to win. So um, it's going to be, should be a good game. For uh, Travion, um, you guys both shot great, but the rest of the team really struggled, especially in close. How frustrating is that when you're getting good looks, missing, and you made it up by getting it on the boards, but it, does that get a little frustrating at a certain point when you, you say you're getting good looks and close looks and missing? I mean, it can, but you got to respond. I mean, you want to miss shots. And the days where you miss shots, you got to do other things that help us with this defense. We want to really get stops. And we get stops. I mean, we don't score this. We have a better chance. So we just want to worry about the other things when shots aren't falling. Melvin, you talked about the Richmond games. Um, in the two previous ones, what do you think you have to do better to win the third one? Uh, no personnel. And uh, I think both times we just – we just weren't locked in on certain assignments. I mean, I felt I felt as though we won a game at their place, and of course, coach went over to play and said they might do this. T.J. Klein slips the screen, gets a layup, sends it to another overtime, and that was just you know not being on edge and not knowing their personnel. So I mean, for the most part, we just gotta you know compete, get some rest, and you know really lock in on their personnel overall. Paul, Trevion, do you mind talking a second about that no look pass you threw to Jonathan, or was it? What, did you see him coming down the lane? And um, also, would you mind talking about the Fordham strategy that seemed to be beat you with their guards by penetration? Yeah, um, with, with a pass, I mean, um, it was in the zone. Terry was open, I believe. 
and the guy jumped and and Johnny um knife and cut down the lane. I saw him and just passed it to him, knowing he's a great finisher. And for the guys, I mean, we already knew going to the game that guys was was real attacking, attacking. And we're gonna be on attack mode, so we wanted to keep him in front as much as possible. But they're also a good shooter, so it was a it's gonna be a tough matchup going to, going into the game itself. And Savage Smith and um, all the other guys, they they really attack and they're good. Today. Melvin, been kind of a over here, kind of, kind of a tough stretch for you down the end here. Can you talk about your your confidence today because you were very confident shooting the ball, and and how much being near home was a big was that a big difference for you? Uh, I mean, yeah, I could. Sometimes you know you get into your own head, and sometimes it's hard fighting yourself, and you're just trying to fight, figure out the answers, you know, by yourself. But you know, as of late, I just I just I forget it. You know, uh, this is this is senior. The next couple of weeks is senior week, so. The least I could do is just play with my hair down and try to get some wins for our seniors. And you know, I, you, you can't miss a shot you never take. So I've been trying to be as aggressive as I could possibly be and try to win some more games for Travion, Jared, and Bree. Back here, Melvin. Was there any specific point in this game where you felt the momentum swinged and you guys really got things going? Oh uh, yeah, when Mo went to the free throw line, they were up five. Mo was able to cut it in half a little bit. And from that point on, you know, our, our huddles got a little more tighter. You know, our leader stepped up and pretty much just said we need some more stops. And, you know, the guys responded, and Johnny played a huge part. He came in, pressured the ball, found open guys, and, you know, that was the big push for us. All right, two more questions for the players. Matt? You guys are used to um, sitting out Thursday watching. Is this an advantage for you now, having a game under your belt here, taking on Richmond tomorrow? Um, no, it's not an advantage. We just – they got the advantage. Uh, right now we just got to rest. And, I mean, it was, it was different. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a bye, but, you know, we just got to do what we got to do now. All right. Anything else for players? All right, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Questions for Coach Smart? Anyone? Ralph? Shaka, we had uh, actually talked a little bit about this the other day. You know, so much has been talked about about you guys transitioning or learning to play without Briante, but you're also just not shooting very well. Um, and that might, does that have to do with Briante not playing, or is that just a slump that you can't seem to shake? We're going to shake it. It's just a matter of when a, a dam's going to break. Uh, and today, you know, Melvin shot the ball well, but overall as a team, Somebody pointed out if you take Trey and Melvin out, uh, the percentage is really low. Uh, but yeah, Bree, Bree being out has something to do with that. He, he's really uh, a good facilitator, had a, had a great assist to turnover ratio, was able to get us into offense. Uh, but, you know, he's not playing, so it's uh, something that we got to continue to get better at. Okay, back here. Shaka, what did you think of the crowd today? I mean, when you guys got on a roll, they really got loud and were cheering. Yeah, our crowd is terrific, and uh, our fans, uh, you know, we're always appreciative of them coming up to Brooklyn and supporting us. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but, but uh, it seems like every time we come up here, we, we have as many fans as anybody uh, or more. So I think that just says a lot about the people that support us and uh, them being behind us. And, you know, obviously uh, some people probably made plans to – be up here for the first game being Friday. And, you know, some people adjusted their plans as we did. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, we're appreciative of that and excited about playing on Friday against Richmond. Tim. Shock, when you got down five, um, it seemed the, the intensity picked up on your end, especially on the glass. Did you sense anything with your guys or did you say anything to them at that point? Did I say anything to them? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I said a lot to them, but, uh, it's not really about what I said. It's uh, it's about you know their decision to play with more aggressiveness. Uh, you know, Fordham. Really, every time we play Fordham, they they play us really tough. Uh, usually, somewhere early in the second half, we're able to break away. But uh, you know, th today uh, that was not the case. And uh, you know, they they made some shots and hung in there with us and. Uh, but I thought our guys did a good job of, of being a more aggressive team in the last six minutes. John. Coach, to the guys in your locker room, is playing Richmond a third time significant or, or insignificant? 
Oh, it's significant. I, I, well, not really the number of times, but just that we're playing them right now. Uh, you know, we uh, we had a really tough loss there uh, a couple weeks ago, and you know that one for our guys was was uh, a tough one to take because uh, it was one of those games where you know they they had outplayed us for most of the game, and uh, then at the end of the first overtime we felt like we had stolen the game, and uh, then they stole it back, and uh, so uh, you know it's, it's interesting. I heard from a lot of fans after the game. That was just a fun game to watch. Um, you know, as a coach or a player, it's a little bit different. But uh, we're, we're excited to, about the chance to play them again. Uh, they're, they're a really good team. I think they've gotten better and better as the season has gone on. And it uh, should be a great game. Cool. Shaka, uh, would you mind talking a moment about the job that Mo and Trey did on the offensive boards and uh, Melvin's shooting stroke? Yeah, and you know, I think uh, when Mal's a great shooter, when he goes out there with a clear head and uh, and just shoots the ball the right way and and honors the process. Uh, you know, I thought he did that uh, today for the most part. There was one that he rushed when we got down a little bit, but other than that, they were really, really good looking shots. And uh, lo and behold, they a lot of them went in. In terms of Mo and Trey, and I would add Terry on the offensive glass. Um, those guys were really, really aggressive. We needed to be that way because we did not shoot the ball particularly well from outside or even from two. Uh, so, you know, it looks like we missed uh, 41 shots. Is that right, Drew? Uh, and we got 20 of them back. So that's, uh, you know, we talk about rebounding percentage all the time. And if our offensive rebounding percentage can be 50% or close to 50%, that's phenomenal. 40% is really good. So, 41 is correct. You have good math. Thanks. I won the math meet in seventh grade. Seriously, you guys need to <laughs> type that. Chaka, kind of following off of that, you talk about Mo's impact at the right time because I don't think he'd scored until he went to the foul line, and he got a, a big yeah. block shot and dunk and, and kind of impact at the right moment. Yeah, Mo really, really cares, and uh, sometimes. Uh, Almost to his own detriment, you know, when, when a few plays don't go his way early in the game, he gets a little bummed out. Um, so it was good to see him bounce back and uh, get to the foul line a couple times and also, you know, finish with that dunk. And then I thought the block that he had on Severe, not sure exactly what the time was, but I thought that was one of the most critical defensive plays that we had because it allowed us to get a little bit more of a cushion. All right, two more questions. Paul. Shockey, talk about uh, Mel needing a clear head. Did you talk to him at all about that, or did you, uh, he's a shooter? Did you just leave him alone and let him shoot to work his way out of it? We talk about that every day with all of our guys. That's, uh, to me, that's the foundational building block of, of playing basketball or doing anything uh, at your best is being able to have a clear head. So, yeah, we talk about it, but that doesn't necessarily uh, – <laughs> I mean it's going to happen. I thought Mel did a good job of, uh, you know, just once he got out there, uh, you know, playing free, not really worrying about the last play or the score or what might happen moving forward. Len, last question. Shock, you heard me ask the kids this. Everybody knows about Indiana, Kentucky, and Carolina Duke, but what does it mean for college basketball to have rivalries like VCU Richmond? I think rivalries are, you know, what makes college basketball what it is. And, you know, I don't really get into the whole, you know, ranking of the rivalries, whose is more intense or, or more severe. I mean, I've, I've, I've worked at six different schools as a basketball coach. And, you know, you, if you're fortunate, you have, you have a really good rivalry that you're a part of. Uh, we're fortunate to have that with Richmond. You know, when I first got to VCU, we were in separate leagues. So... It was a big deal for about a week or so leading up to the game, then the game itself, and then everyone kind of moved on. Um, now, you know, it, it's, it, it, it lasts longer because we're in the same conference and uh, we play multiple times, in this case three times. We played three times last year. So uh, I think it's great. And, you know, when, when both programs are highly competitive, uh, when both programs are competing to be in the postseason, I think it means even more because then obviously the games this time of year mean so much more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.